Yo ho ho, dudes! Welcome to a mushroom pumpkin wellington with a red currant jus. This is delicious, this is incredible. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll it where there's more pastry per filling and coat it with this beautiful red currant jus. Serve with roasted veg and Brussels sprouts. This is epic, this is delicious, and this is fit for a feast. It's gonna take you an hour from start to finish and genuinely it makes a wonderful centerpiece dish. First step what we're gonna do is we're gonna roast our almonds. We have 200 grams of almonds. So we're gonna roughly chop them. If you have a food processor, you can do that, but we wanna make this as democratic as possible. Okay, we wanna turn these into umami, sweet, delicious, magic pockets of flavor. So we're gonna put two tablespoons of tamari, and we're gonna put one tablespoon of maple syrup. Maybe it's more like one and a half, I'm really honest. Take your clean fingers and give them a good mix. Okay, we're gonna roast these for about 190 degrees for about 10 to 12 minutes, just until they go nice and golden. Okay, time to get our base veg for our Wellington. So into a non-stick frying pan, put it on high heat. As that heats up, we've got three, four medium leeks. We grew these in our farm. You do not need a farm for this recipe. Uh, but you could use leek or red onion. This is just your base veg. Make sure to use all the green of the leek. Just, there can be a little bit of sand inside it, just to just give it a good wash. I have two cloves of garlic. This will be our base flavors. Okay, in goes our garlic. We're adding that in just as the leek starts to brown ever so slightly. Mix that through. Okay, so grab your 200 grams of mushrooms. We're using oyster mushrooms. We're gonna just chop these into small bite-side pieces. The main reason we're chopping them small is it'll just make it easier when we go to cut the wellington. Uh, next step, we have 200 grams of pumpkin or squash. This is technically 325, but I'm gonna cut the skin off. Take a box grater, and just grate. I'll just pop half of it in to stop it burning. Get a nice generous pinch of salt. Help draw the moisture from that squash and help the flavors evaporate and come together. Okay, we have 200 grams of, we wanna make this as festive as possible. We have 200 grams of vac packed chestnuts. In they go to the pan. Chestnuts, if you cannot get them, they're quite like a potato meets a nut, which sounds a bit weird with a slight little chicken undertone. Um, you know, we didn't grow up eating chestnuts in Ireland because chestnuts typically were, what do you call them, conkers? We used to have conkers, uh, which is a horse chestnut, but it wasn't edible. Whereas um, you go to Portugal or Lisbon, or in Lisbon anyway, they'd always have them um, roasting on an open fire. And it was always, you always felt very romantic, like in a movie. Anyway, we're putting 200 grams of chestnuts into the pan. Uh, do we have an app, Steve? Yeah, we do. So the app, we've taken our 11 courses, which we've partnered with medical experts to help people to be healthier and happier. Most people know what it is to be healthy and happy, but they struggle to do it. And so how much is it and how do I get into it? So it's normally 150 for annual membership. Ah, uh, surely you can do better than that. Okay, right. Just because you're here, we're going to do a deal. Two for one. Two for one on annual membership. Yeah. What does two for one mean? Like if I buy one, I get another one for free. Yeah, so it's the most selfish thing you can do. If you buy one for a friend, you get one for yourself too. So you can support each other to be healthier and happier. Amazing. So perfect gift. Yeah. Link great down. last minute gift or great for support for the new year. Check it out. Two for one on Happy Power Annual Membership. Wonderful. Link, Link down, down below. below. Okay, almonds are ready. They've been in there for about 10 to 12 minutes. They are beautifully roasted and caramelized and ooh, they're gonna be just pockets of flavor. Just leave them to cool. Okay, we're gonna turn the heat off the pan, just we don't want anything to burn at this stage. And we've got a lot going on. Put the remainder of our thyme in the pan. So take the leaves just off the stalk. And now we've got our 10, our 10 um, sage leaves. Chop them as fine as you can, because as I said, sage can be really strong and you don't want someone getting a massive big leaf of it in their, in their dinner. Back to our dear friend tamari or else soy sauce. We're going to go with about two tablespoons of tamari or soy sauce. It goes wonderfully with mushrooms. There still is the residual heat in the pan, so don't worry, just mix it through. Let those flavors come together. Okay, so grab our toasted almonds, and they will have stuck to the pan because the maple syrup, so just remove it all, and we really want to get all that flavor, as much of that sticky stuff in. So what this is adding is this is increasing our fat content, but from whole food sources, and it's bringing a bite of texture. And finally, we have 200 grams of cooked grain of choice. I'm using whole milk couscous, use quinoa, brown rice, whatever you have, or even one of those backpack grains. So just in it goes. This is gonna help form the body. 
so we do cut our Wellington at holes together beautifully. Those, those are going to be deadly. Uh, final step, just before we roll our Wellington, just take a spoon and make sure to season it to your taste, just so that at every step of the cooking process, you're kind of happy with how it tastes. Mm, wow, it's got a lot of flavor. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Okay, so get your store-bought puff pastry. We're gonna use two rolls, because we want to make this where there's more pastry per Wellington. We want to make this indulgent, delicious, and decadent. So they come with their own um, paper, which is really handy, so just roll it out. Just carefully roll it out. Okay, so if you want, you can make one big, massive Wellington if you want one big log, but we prefer to do, divide it into two. So I'm gonna just literally, with my eye, just take half the, the Wellington filling and just slowly bring it in. Okay, so once you've got about half of it on your pastry, take your hands and you're gonna have to compress it here so that when it cuts, it holds its shape. So let's take our pastry and let's fold it over. We wanna be a little quick because it's hot here. Cut off any extra pastry. We're gonna fold it, just carefully fold it over. So you want the sunny side down. Okay, so take a baking tray and pop on your Wellington all ready to go. Move it across to the edge. So as I mentioned, you can get two large ones or, or two small ones or one large one. Okay, so we have our Wellington done like that. Time to score. Take a little butter knife. And what you do is you want to just literally lightly cover the top. You don't want to go too deep. And then with the remaining pastry, just chop it into whatever Christmas shape you want. I can pretend I did this, but Lucy really did this. And we found the best way to make our Wellington crispy is to use the Happy Pear Oat Milk. Have you ever heard of them? Anyway, grab oat milk or non-dairy milk of choice uh, and you'll just get a nicer, more golden exterior. So we're going to pop that in and bake it for about 40 minutes until it's beautiful and golden. Okay, while our Wellington is cooking in the oven, we're going to make a red currant jus. Sounds fun fancy, but a jus in essence is this really concentrated, rich, kind of winey, umami, just delicious gravy that's going to make this dish pop. So. Grab a saucepan, pop it on medium heat. Uh, first step, we have 200 grams of red wine. We're using cooking wine here, just in it goes. 500 ml of veg stock, in that goes. We're gonna go with one tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. Traditionally, red currant jelly would be used. We wanted to kind of control the degree of sweetness, so I've got 100 grams of red currants. Alternatively, you could just put one tablespoon of red currant jelly in, uh, but we're gonna make our own here. So we've got 100 grams of red currants in these go. Just make sure to take any stalks off. And finally, just add a little bit of sweetness. We're gonna go with three tablespoons of maple syrup. Okay, grab a lovely little whisk and just give it a little whisk. So what we wanna do is reduce this by two thirds. So this turns into a thick, gravy-like, delicious jus. And don't worry, the red currants will pop and we'll sieve them just it out. They're just gonna add this just freshness, this vibrancy and this vitality to it. A little bit of acidity. Okay, so we upgraded our whisk to a bigger one just so we could mash those red currants so they release their pectin and help form the thickening agent as it goes. So you'll see it's come right down to where it's quite a, a small little sauce. Like this tastes absolutely magic. So just as it starts to reduce and come down to where it's getting smaller, just reduce the heat down to kind of low to medium because we don't want it to burn. And this is the moment when you kind of have to stand over it a little bit more. So for the first 20 minutes, you're just stirring it every couple of minutes. You don't even have to really worry about it too much. But as it starts to reduce and get down where it's quite syrupy, reduce the heat, because the difference between a good sauce and a burnt sauce can be 30 seconds. So normally with a sauce, what you'll do is it should coat the back of a spoon. So when I put it in, it should, we should be able to do this. Holds its shape, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna turn that off the heat. That's really nice and syrupy. And as I showed you, just make sure it coats the back of a spoon. I'm gonna take a beautiful little gravy boat, or our version of a gravy boat. Okay, so take our jus and really try to get every last little bit. I'm gonna get a spatula. Just get every last bit of this. Just to show you the texture of this, just for beautiful, like I could actually sit the spoon on the top of it, but that is just silky smooth. And you can see just that lovely red hue to it. It's sweet, it's syrupy, it's salty, it's acid. Like, it's just magnificent. Okay, it's been in the oven for about 45 minutes. The kitchen smells magnificent. In that time, we have some spuds, Brussels sprouts. We have bits to accompany this dish to make it epic. So just carefully slide your, your Wellington. Our paper's gonna be a little sensitive, so I'm just gonna carefully slide it onto our knife. Just easier to chop it on a chopping board. 
Looks beautiful. Easiest way to chop a Wellington is with a serrated blade. So just carefully let the knife do the work. So don't really press down. So just carefully. Okay, so take your Wellington, carefully pop it down. We're gonna pop it right in the middle here. And now to pop our red currant jus just over the top. Okay, here we are, the moment of truth. Oh, that sweet sound of pastry chopping. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That's so good, it really is. It's genuinely magnificent, wonderful centerpiece dish. Took 45 minutes from start to finish. That jus is next level, so well worth trying. Um, if you do cook it, please tag us on social media. Click the subscribe button because we love this channel and love um, trying to help you eat more plant-based foods. Uh, thanks, Mel, for watching. Wishing you a happy festivities, whatever you're celebrating. And uh, send a load of love. Bye.